And the more we learn about ADHD, it's really not about attention. It's mm-hmm. really a disorder of self-regulation and executive functioning. So let's just jump right in. I think we're already starting to talk about this first question is, well, where are some of the most common ADHD misconceptions? Absolutely. So a lot of it really stems from that name ADHD. And a lot of the great leaders in the field, you know, this field of ADHD is such a small little niche. Uh, and there are some incredible leaders in this field, like Dr. Russell Barkley, Dr. George McCloskey, Sarah Ward, who was a who was a fellow speech and language pathologist, uh, Peg Dawson, the author of Smart but Scattered. You can look at your you know Attitude Magazine, A D D Attitude Magazine, your local chat organization. A lot of the great uh, leaders, the prominent leaders and the local leaders, are really pushing to have this name changed in the DSM, the Diagnostic Standards Manual. Uh, because it's really a very misleading title. It's mm. not an attention deficit, first of all. It's individuals who have an abundance of attention, too much, att- too much attention to give, where they're mm. responding to all of the stimuli in the environment, uh, and they're easily getting distracted and responding to everything out there. And this heavy focus on hyperactivity, inattentiveness, whether it's inattentive type or hyperactive type or combination type, it's really s- so focused on the external you know, kids who can't sit still, kids who can't focus, kids who are lazy, kids who are disinterested. And it's it's causing these kids to not get the therapy that they need. It's sending them to outdated and ineffective therapies, whether it's behavioral or, you know, occupational, whatever it may be, uh, and into these social skills groups because of things they're seeing externally. But it's really the internal executive function skills that are lacking. And Dr. Russell Barkley talks about this, Sarah Ward talks about this, is it's really... EFDD, executive functioning developmental disorder or developmental Mm. delay in varying degrees of severity. Uh, So that prefrontal cortex of the brain right behind the forehead. So over time, the brain develops from back to front. And the front of the brain is the last to develop. And that prefrontal cortex, the front of the brain, isn't really fully developed until around 25, 26, between 25 and 30. Uh, So those executive functions develop over time through relationships and experiences. Uh, So we live in a world right now where relationships and experiences are uh, significantly decreasing, and we can certainly talk about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But individuals with ADHD, are uh, they have a significant developmental delay of that prefrontal cortex. It's developing slower there's lower rates of uh, dopamine in the brain. ADHD is a disorder of structure, function, and development of the brain. So this is a true neurodiverse population in that the brain is different in terms of structure, function, and development. And, mm. it, and all the areas that are affected are the areas that deal with self-regulation, self-motivation, social-emotional decisions. Um, so it, this disorder of ADHD really, uh, needs to have a heavier focus on emotion management, uh, ability to self-regulate, self-motivate, and, uh, really be able to manage your overall external behaviors internally. With my understanding too of the brain, the developmental part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, like I know a lot about that because I do a lot of emotional control with, you know, with, with adults or, you know, teens or young adults and trying to understand, hey, trying to build this part of the brain, you know, often when we're triggered in our emotional state and we're heightened, we're not actually operating out of our part of our prefrontal cortex. Even as adults, we're operating out of our like amygdala and our hippocampus and all these you got things. It. And, and you tell me if this is a good analogy. I often use this. It's like someone with ADHD, we're all swimming uh, in a pool, but people with ADHD, it's like they're swimming with one arm versus yeah. two. So they're there, but it's like they're trying, they're having to over, like work overtime to keep up. Um, That's exactly what it is. Okay. And, and, and the way Dr. Russell Barkley describes it is, you know, it's not a disorder of attention. It's a mm. disorder of performance. It's not a disorder of intelligence. It's a disorder of performance. So these, so really what ADHD does is it splits the, pr- the brain in, in half between performance and knowledge. So these mm. kids really know the rules. They know what they have to do. Uh, they've uh, they, they've been through these experiences before. But when it comes down to the natural environment, right there in the moment, it's very hard for them to use what they know and show mm. what they know. Uh, so they've been through these social skills groups where they know not to alienate themselves. They know how to not uh, upset a peer or dominate a conversation. And they've been through these negative emotions before when it's hard for them to make and keep friends. It's hard mm-hmm. for them to apply what they learn in the classroom 
to tests. They struggle with reading comprehension and writing, and they have all these negative emotions and negative feelings that they've been through, and they want to improve. And kids with ADHD have such great empathy, and they want friends, and they uh, they want to have lots of friends. They want to have experiences. But because of their ADHD, mm-hmm. they end up getting stuck in video games and computers and internet and phone and screens. And kids with ADHD are heavily prone to screen addictions and video game addictions. But overall, their ability to perform in the natural environment and show what they know and use their social skills and use their academic executive functioning skills and learn from past experiences, it's so hard for them. And that's really what leads to all of this negative self-talk. So Mm -hmm. individuals with ADHD have very high levels of negative self-talk, negative Mm -hmm. self-image. And this is what leads to a lot of the comorbid issues of anxiety, depression, uh, you know, whether it's an eating disorder or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Uh, So many times ADHD comes with something else. Uh, And I could uh, for sure back that up with what I've seen, a lot of comorbidity, especially if it's not diagnosed or not caught. Um, Oh, yeah. You know, it presents itself as depression, uh, anxiety, where people, do they just give up because there's this expectation of the, the child, the teen, like, why can't I just, like, what's something I can't seem to, fo- I can't seem to focus or on one task, I can't seem to get anything done. And so they're so distractible because they're thinking of 10,000 things. So then it can manifest as like shame and something's wrong. And mm-hmm. so then they give up and it's like, hold on, there's something else going on. Then you get tested. You're like, oh, hey, look at this. You've been struggling with this. And it's. And then for some, it could help because they realize, oh, it's not me. It's like my brain, you know, and that's something that I can't control. But there's ways to learn to, to get help.